Jetson was one of the first companies to reveal a marketable electric beetle capable of high speed maneuvers at over 60 miles per hour. It was a big step up from the first generation as it incorporated intuitive flight controls with a redundant flight computer. It's kind of like your typical drone with obstacle avoidance and automatic flight correction. With a price tag of around $70,000, the craft could arguably be one of the first affordable VTOLs on the market. There's no doubt that these types of VTOLs will become safer and more reliable over time. But there also has to be flight regulations and design checks which would prevent catastrophic accidents with these types of vehicles. There is no doubt that technological innovation is racing ahead of regulatory authorities. And as a result, many companies are coming out with their own variant of a personal aircraft. So we get right into it, bypass propellers, and go straight jet propulsion. The speeder is the ultimate thrill ride for crazy enthusiasts and even the hearing impaired. A 30% scaled prototype is being tested with eight jet engines running on zero net carbon fuel. And I'm not too sure what the flight time would be on that. Anyways, the craft can be configured for autonomous or remote piloted flight. And I'm taking that the latter is probably going to be the first thing that's tested. With theoretical speeds at over 500 miles per hour, many other companies are pursuing this particular concept as well. Mr. Zapata, the inventor of the Flyboard Air, is currently working on the Jet Racer. This particular one is a little bit more dialed back with a 150 mile per hour speed. Powered by 10 kerosene micro turbojet engines, the craft can theoretically climb to over 10,000 feet. There is no official flight time, so one can only assume with our current understanding of physics, that this jet would only fly for only a few minutes. The story doesn't really stop there, and if you're a crazy enthusiast like me, then you can actually sign up and hope to be drawn to test fly the vehicle. 100 applicants will be selected, and then furthermore, this will be drawn down to 25. Either case, I hope to be drawn, but I have no expectation that Zapata will actually let me fly this half a million dollar machine. Now obviously there are other propeller driven craft out there which are competing with the Jetson 1. And Reese Rikon is also working on this open design which is capable of landing on both water and land. It has very similar numbers to the Jetson 1 with flight assistance along with interchangeable batteries. Not much has been revealed about its flight capabilities but one would assume that you'd have to keep both your arms and legs within the cockpit at all times. Another notable contender is the Air One, and it is designed for two people this time with both passengers having the ability to access controls. This particular variant has an increased speed of around 150 miles per hour with a 110 mile range. The aircraft also incorporates a flyby intent system which is currently being utilized in drones manufactured by Air it's pretty much the same thing as flight assistance. This prevents the pilot going into manual mode and obliterating the craft. It might appear that range could be dramatically increased with tiltable wings or with thrust vectoring. However, the company argues that this absence of machinery reduces overall weight, thereby making it counterintuitive to make the Air One more complex. This brings us to a debatable topic as vectored thrust is a critical attribute in many new electric aircraft including the Lilium Jet and the S4 from Joby Aviation. The Lilium Jet, as we all know, has ducted fan propulsion, and it's able to achieve a 190 mile per hour speed. Of course, this is a six passenger prototype with a two and a half million dollar price tag. Then there's the five occupant S4, which has a maximum speed of 200 miles per hour. This one's a little bit less with a $1 million price tag. So obviously vector thrust makes sense in larger aircraft where you can justify the cost. But in personal aircraft, it's more of a balancing act between making an aircraft that is affordable or making an over-engineered flying Ferrari which can outmaneuver any electric VTOL in the air. Admittedly, someone will make that one person flying Ferrari, which has vectored thrust, and it will probably spawn a new generation of electric VTOLs. However, there is an alternative approach to thrust vectoring. Meet the X5 by Horizon Aircraft. It features a very unique and transformative wing, and this split wing solves a key problem with other lift and cruise designs because it limits the amount of drag during horizontal flight. It does this by entirely enclosing the fans and utilizing a pusher prop after vertical takeoff. 
it pretty much behaves like a normal plane during horizontal flight. But the X5 is also a hybrid, so it runs on a combination of batteries charged via turbo generator. The company already has a 50% sized prototype in testing, and apparently the full size version will be able to achieve a 280 mile per hour speed with a 300 mile range, which is something completely unheard of. But if they can pull this project off and make a real X5, it would probably be one of the more impressive electric vehicles out there. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos.